dental implant surfaces continue to improve and change. It is this scientific determination to make implants more effective that helps to move the industry forward and is key to improving success rates. We're looking to obviously get two things. One is faster integration uh, so that the speed of integration is accelerated when we put an implant in. Originally, you know, P.I. Brandemark in his classic work where told us to wait three to six months, as most of you know. Uh, then we've gotten down to the point where things like osteotite and all the other rough textured surfaces are approximately two months. Um, although some of the companies uh, have pushed it a little bit sooner, uh, most of the research is pretty clear that if the implant locks in at about 35 to 40 newton centimeters torque in healed bone, not grafted bone and not immediate extraction sockets, that we basically have enough security to be able to load that implant at eight weeks. So we're looking to see whether or not we can accelerate the process. Uh, something is a catalyst that will do two things. The first one, as I said, is to speed it up. The next thing is to change the equation. What do I mean by that? Can we change the amount of bone on the implant is also critical. Now, the industry is delving into a new arena of surface technology, nanotechnology. It is exciting, vast, intriguing. People hear about it all the time. But what is it really? And how can it be applied to implant dentistry? To understand nanotechnology, you need to understand that the size of a nanometer is exactly a billionth of a meter. Scientists believe that nanotechnology offers properties that wouldn't be available at any other scale. Therefore, it isn't surprising that researchers at Biomed 3i, in their quest to continuously improve the osteotite surface, decided to give nanotechnology a closer look. The osteotite surface is one of the most clinically documented and proven dental implant surfaces in the industry. With more than 10 years of clinical use in implant dentistry, but researchers are always looking for ways to make it even better. The question arose, what happens if we deposit nano-sized crystals of calcium phosphate on the osteotite surface? Calcium phosphate is a well-known biomaterial in implant dentistry. Could it, at a nanoscale, optimize this surface? The biological effect of the prototype nanoscale calcium phosphate deposition was initially being studied by researchers in the UCLA School of Dentistry's Jane and Jerry Weintraub Center for Reconstructive Biotechnology in Los Angeles, California. That's the process of depositing nanoscale calcium phosphate crystals on the surface of an implant. However, the crystals are so small that scientists need to use advanced high-resolution scanning electron microscopy at high magnification to visualize the details. Biomet 3i using state-of-the-art field emission scan microscopy, was able to visualize the deposited surface and noted that it was not a layer or a coating, but actually a discrete crystalline deposition, or DCD. With DCD, the total amount of calcium phosphate on the implant is so small that it measures less than 20 micrograms. These characteristics substantially distinguish this process from traditional plasma sprayed calcium phosphate coatings, which have approximately 20,000 micrograms of calcium phosphate. It's more like a snow is falling to the implant surface rather than we are blasting or making to stick, so on and so forth. It's just automatic movement between this gravity of nanoparticle to implant surface. So that the discrete deposition is fabricated with this principle in a way that each individual crystals will be dispersed in almost equal distance. So you don't really have to force them to apply in a uniform fashion. It just do it by itself. That's a fascinating phenomenon and that's the principle, one of the principles of nanotechnology. When Biomet 3i took a look at UCLA's experiments with an early prototype combining nanoscale calcium phosphate crystals with the osteotite surface, the effects were surprising. We tested the biological effect of this hybrid implant DCD and osteotite surface. We placed a small miniature implant made for rat size and surgically placed in the rough femur and let it heal for a certain period and subjected to a prosintus, which is a dislodged implant. When we measure the peak dislodgement force 
as OS integration value. We found that experimental implant required exceptionally high stress to dislodge this implant. Even at the two-week healing time, that's way high. And in fact, this value of ex experimental implant at the two-week healing time is about same as the value of eight-week healing time of control implant, which was very, very surprising. These effects were not as pronounced when DCD was applied on a smooth machined implant surface. So the biological synergistic effect of the osteotite surface and DCD was clear. At another independent laboratory, a study was conducted on DCD implants and osteotite implants that were placed in the tibia of rabbits and allowed to heal for 14 days. The peak pullout forces required to detach DCD and osteotite implants from the bone were measured and the results showed a 109% difference, statistically significant in favor of DCD implants, suggesting that discrete crystalline deposition substantially enhances early implant bone integration. At the same time, multiple studies were initiated under the direction of Dr. J.E. Davies at the University of Toronto. The researchers at the Bone Interface Group began the T-chamber evaluations to demonstrate the rate and extent of osseointegration while other preclinical studies assess the phenomenon of bone bonding. The tea plant study was, a, was to look at a different phenomenon, and that's the phenomenon of osteoconduction, or the apparent growth of bone along the surface of an implant. It's very difficult to see this particular phenomenon when you're looking at an implant in the classical sense. So we designed a specific experimental uh, geometry to be able to look and be able to quantify the rate at which bone grows along the implant surface. The bone bonding study was designed specifically to look at the uh, ability of an implant surface to have bone bonding to that surface. This was impossible previously with metallic surfaces. The results were groundbreaking. The mean forces to detach bone from the implants with DCD were at least five times greater than the mean forces measured to detach bone from the regular osseotite implants. Scientists also observed that DCD implants with the highest peak forces had actually fractured within the bone, not at the bone implant interface. Certainly these results were incredible. Uh, I don't think it's because we've discovered a new phenomenon in biology, but certainly the interface which is being created between bone and this particular implant surface is quite different from anything ever seen before. Researchers demonstrated that the rate of dissolution of the discrete crystalline deposition of the DCD implant was substantially less than traditional plasma sprayed coatings, representing a significant advancement in implant surface technology. This new surface technology is now available to you through Biomet 3i. It's called the Nanotite Implant, and it is an important part in not only introducing nanotechnology to implant dentistry, but also to introducing clinical benefits to your practice. The Nanotite surface should have clinical relevance for enhancing outcomes when used for challenging indications such as immediate and accelerated loading, immediate replacement in extraction sockets, simultaneous grafted sites and sinus lips, in locations requiring short lengths or wide diameters, and in aesthetic cases where bone preservation is critical. Clinicians who use the nanotite implant in their practices are impressed and hope to see the full capabilities of nanotechnology firsthand. We have already treated patients in one day. We placed implants and we immediately placed some teeth on those implants and we had a pretty good success. But now with this new technology I'm pretty sure that in the future we'll have even better success rate with this approach. And if you have the opportunity to give the patient that you come in in the morning to the office and you get the implants, you get the teeth right away in the same, on the, in the same day, this I think is a big advantage and it, uh, a big effect for the patient. It is clear that to be front and center in the world of implant dentistry and have a successful practice, clinicians have to stay at the forefront of technology with innovations like nanotechnology. We try to stay at the cutting edge of uh, oral and maxillofacial surgery and especially implant dentistry because we do such a huge amount of implant dentistry. And 
staying at the cutting edge, you have to look and evaluate new products and see what, what they're good for. And the, this DCD technology, or the nano uh, calcium phosphate, is probably the biggest thing that's hit implant dentistry in the last few years. It, it's, a, it's a big step forward. The Nanotite implant is the tool that will help clinicians discover the strength and science behind nanotechnology and share the benefits with their patients. One of the big things in my practice is I have a lot of older patients. And we know that as pe people age, the cells that allow for osteointegration tend to decrease. And this DCD technology may help improve the predictability in these older patients. The synergy between osteotide and the nanoscale calcium phosphate crystals makes a lot of sense, I think. It has been shown that the combination osteotide with this new technology showed the, be the best osteointegration comparing to a machine surface with this new technology. So it seems that the combination, the osteotide topography with this new technology gives us much better osteointegration. It's very exciting to us as clinicians and as academicians because this discrete deposited nanotechnology allows for the best of both worlds. A billionth of a meter, could something so small really make such a large difference? The answer is yes. The answer is nanotite.